In this third and final segment on the principles of diet selection, we're going to talk about social models, especially how important mother is. So in this integrated rangeland management class, this is Karen Launchbaugh. We'll talk about social models. Okay, social models are always there for animals to learn from, from when they're born. In fact, um, they even the milk and amniotic fluids of mothers given lamb, uh, lambs and calves and all young some ideas of what to eat. So we've talked about what to eat and what to avoid. Well, one important thing is to ask for directions, especially ask mom and peers. They're very important social models. Uh, uh, the animals are called social models, but the process is called social facilitation. Mother is the most important social model. Think about some reasons why she's a really important social model. While she's the one that young animals will follow and eat what she eats and avoid what she avoids. And here's an example of a young lamb just eating right nose to nose with her mother. What are the reasons? One, she's successful. Obviously, it's a good, she's a good model because she's alive. Secondly, she's there when an animal is born. We talked about an innate uh, um, connection to a large animal that's near, near one when they're born. So she's there. She's already given information through amniotic fluid and through now she'll give it through milk and through being there. But finally, uh, she has similar um, attributes as the young. So she has a similar physiology, morphology, and neurology as her young. So she's a good model because she's similar to the young animal. Lambs generally eat what mom eats. And one of the first experiments that was done on this was done by um, Sarwat Mirza and Fred Provenza, again at Utah State. And um, in 1990, they wanted to know how important was mother's influence on lambs. So they had ewes that learned to eat service berry, a very good, perfectly fine foraging plant. And they were trained to avoid mountain mahogany. And then they asked the lambs, which, which shrub do you uh, prefer? And it was really strong. The, if mom ate service berry, the lambs ate service berry many bites. Uh, if she avoided mountain mahogany, the lambs avoided mountain mahogany. This went on for quite some time, not only that first trial, but um, months later and even after weaning, this last graph on the right hand side shows that lambs still, when they were given a choice, and two months later, still preferred um, the service berry to the mountain mahogany after they were weaned. Now let's take a look about what look at what that looks like the influence of mother when lambs are learning to eat carrageena and Russian olive. Instead of their normal morning meal, these ewes and their lambs are being offered a meal of Russian olive and carrageena. Ewes are familiar with both shrubs, but after eating carrageena, they received a bolus of lithium chloride. This caused nausea and an aversion to carrageena. The lambs have no experience with either plant, so they choose to eat what mom eats. After eating the shrubs with their mothers each morning for five days, the lambs are put into the pen without their mothers. Because they have experience from eating with mom and from positive feedback from the nutrients in Russian olive, they stick to what mom ate and avoid what she avoided. The second set of ewes are averted to Russian olive but eat carrageena. After exposure to the shrubs, the lambs are sent in to graze without their mothers. Again, they choose to eat what mom ate. So as you can see, mothers are really important model to tell animals what to eat and what not to eat. And quite some time ago in 1984, when we were just starting to learn about how animals know what to eat, uh, Dr. Green from Australia was doing some experiments. Uh, with sheep to see how they influenced the, what lambs ate. And so he had the three sets of sheep. And when the lambs were six weeks of age, he did uh, expose some of the lambs with to wheat. He gave them uh, some wheat one hour a day for five days with their mother. Another group got one hour a day for five days of wheat, but mother wasn't there. The third group got no wheat at all, weren't with their mothers. And then he sent them out to the outback, out to the range. And then when they were almost uh, three years old, at 34 months of age, he brought them back 
to the feedlot and he just asked him how much wheat would you like and the results were quite stunning the animals that had no uh, uh, experience with wheat when they were three months of age didn't eat any wheat again uh, 34 when they were 34 months of age so about when they were about three years old they didn't they didn't eat wheat at all they might have they surely would have gotten on to wheat um, after some neophobia effect but when they were first exposed given wheat they didn't eat it the animals that had wheat alone just a few nibbles when they were three months of age ate a little bit of wheat but no different than if they had never had any experience at all however look at the bars on the right animals that had had experience eating wheat with their mothers when they were three months of age ate wheat as if they'd never um never forgotten it uh at three at four, three years of age so they quickly started eating new foods now this is really important if you think about the fact that many times at least in livestock production we often introduce animals to a situation where they have to eat new foods and this would suggest that it's really important to uh, introduce animals to those foods when they're young with their mother the best example would be uh, at feedlot we take animals out of the range and we bring them into a feedlot and we give them a whole host of new foods we give them new kinds of bunks to eat those food in that food in even water troughs look different than what they had on the range and so it's really hard for animals to become accustomed to this new environment and these new foods and based on dr green's work it would be really beneficial to introduce animals to the foods that they're going to experience in feedlot with their mother when they are young so there's actually some producers that are introducing animals to the foods that they'll experience in feedlot uh, with their mothers when they're young so now we're going to take a look at some ex, um, projects that were done on early life experience and how important that would be. These projects were completed with uh, goats out on blackbrush range. So blackbrush is a shrub that has a lot of tannins in it. It's, it's common in southern Utah. And so this research was done in southern Utah. And the question was if, if animals uh, were, getting, were trying to use this food that, that is got full of tannins and difficult to eat, uh, would early life experience be important? So this was some work by, by Roberto Distill, and he had some goats, and at six weeks of age, he um, sent some goats to southern Idaho to Blackbrush Range with their mothers. The other group of goats were sent to a feedlot, a dry lot, just in Logan, uh, where, th where this researcher was from, and they were fed alfalfa pellets. So from six weeks of age to 26 weeks of age, for about 20 weeks, they were with their mother in southern Idaho Range on Blackbrush, or they were with their mom on dry lot in, in Logan. And then he weaned them, and then he offered them at 20 weeks of age all, an all-you-can-eat uh, black brush trial. So he put the goats in individual pens, and they, he just asked them how much black brush could you eat. And the results, obviously, that ones who'd had experience on black brush ate a lot more, twice as much, than the ones that had had no experience. And maybe that's not so much at eight, so unusual at, 20, at four months of age. He tested it for quite a few days over that time, but then he uh, he waited almost uh, you know ten months, nine months later, and there was still quite a bit of difference between the ones who had had experience and those who had not. And this went on for quite some time. I know he did additional studies, and throughout the lives of those sheep, I'm sorry, the lives of those goats, they the ones who had had experience early in life continued to eat more black brush than those that had not. Another interesting experience was done on peers. Now, mother is a really so important social model before weaning, but just like in humans, uh, as, and as uh, young uh, humans get older, they become adolescent, and they're often more influenced by their peers than they are by their parents. And the same is true for cattle and sheep and goats and other animals that we study, that peers become more important later in life. And some research done by Mike Ralphs, who's with the, he was uh, with the uh, National Poisonous Plants Research Lab. Uh, he wanted to get go, uh, cattle to uh, be averted to larkspur. Remember, tall larkspur is the t poisonous plant that causes more uh, deaths among livestock than any other poisonous plant in the West. So he wanted to find a way to get cows to quit eating larkspur. And he thought, well, maybe I could avert them with these new principles that um, Fred Provenza was coming out with in the early 90s. He tried to avert animals. So in 1993, 94, and 95, he averted one set of cattle to uh, larkspur, and then he put them out on the range and he counted the number of bites they ate. He also had a control group that he did not avert, and you can see that the averted animals did not eat 
larkspur at all out on the range and the control animals ate uh, some bites uh, 20 10 to 20 bites uh, so yeah it looked like it was really successful so here's what that looked at on the range in 90 uh, 95 he took the animals out this is just a snippet of information you can see the control animals which were the re the blue animals they ate a lot more than the averted the averted didn't try it looks like on uh, late in the trial there was one animal that tried a little bit but in general the control animals when they were in their own herd they t continued to eat larkspur but the averted animals continued not to eat larkspur and then he put the animals together and look what happened in no time at all those animals that had been averted their whole life in just a day or two they started eating larkspur because they were influenced by their peers so the whole trial didn't work you could avert your animals to uh to something if as long as the whole herd was averted and you really made sure that none of them gave it a try so aversion can be very powerful but uh, animals are very influenced by their peers maybe the upside of this is if you had animals that you wanted to get onto a food that was difficult to uh, for them to eat you say you wanted to get them on to eating a weed or something and then having some peers around that eat that weed or that new food could be very influential now we're going to close out this whole section on diet selection and remember that it's early life experience is really important but all experience is important because as an animal eats something it transforms their body so you are what you eat experience eating transforms the body physiologically morphologically and neurologically the body then for then then transforms the experience so if you're really used to eating a food it's more reinforcing to you than someone who's not is not experienced with that food the same is true with cattle sheep goats deer elk all animals out on the range so as you eat things it changes your body which changes your experiences with the food and over and over and over again this idea of experience transforming the animal was found in some of the work that Roberto Distill and Provenza did. Remember, this was the study where he had some goats and he took them down to Black Brush Range in southern Utah, and another set of goats stayed in Logan on, on feedlot. So one was experienced and one was inexperienced. And what's really amazing is when he um, had some of those animals uh, dissected, he looked at their rumens and he found that the ones who were inexperienced had smaller rumens. The mass of the rumen was quite a bit smaller than the ones who had gone to blackbrush range probably because they had to do more fermenting of compounds in their gut so that their rumens were larger the two pictures of rumens are laid out there and you can see the top rumen is the one that was experienced they went to blackbrush range and that rumen had more mineral content in it and it looks real rough and that's because it had longer papillae and a lot more of structures that are valuable for taking volatile fatty acids out of the rumen the rumen on the right hand side that looks kind of whiter and milky colored were the ones that were on feedlot and of course they were not as used to doing such heavy duty fermenting of uh, cell con of cell walls so the rumen was smaller it had less minerals and it was a finer texture it did not have as much papillae now when roberto got those uh, goats back he also uh, put them on that all you could eat goat trial or uh, all you can eat black buck brush trial and he took blood and he looked at glucuronic acid in the blood and what he found was that the experienced animals were having higher levels of glucuronic acid which is an indication that they had better liver activity they were really um processing that black brush better than the inexperienced animals so again the, these two points just show to, that it's important that when an animal eats a food early in life it changes their body which changes their experience with the food some key points to take home from all of this is one that palatability definitely depends on feedback it's not in and of itself animals detect positive and negative feedback from foods uh, based on digestive feedback animals can therefore discriminate um, based on flavor feedback interactions of the positive and negative feedback so they form preferences for things that have positive feedback and they form aversions for foods that have negative feedback and then magnitude matters the more positive the stronger the preference the more negative the feedback the stronger the aversion animals can tell what made them feel good or ill even if they have lots of foods in their diet and they first do that by blaming the novel food so novelty is important neophobia was the term for that as far as learning it's not all individual learning some of it's facilitated by the peers and mother around the animal mother is the most important social model especially when animals are very young later on peers become important but mother is the most important social model animals learn how to eat food 
not just what to eat, they also have to develop foraging skills and learn how to eat. Early life experience is especially important. Uh, a lot of research has been done on this. Later in life experience can still be important, but early life experience has much more of an ability to change the way the animal is built, so it's more important. And then finally, interactions matter. Structure, structure determines experience, experience determines structure. So eating foods changes the body, which changes the experience that have animals have when they eat that food, which changes the body, which changes the experience, etc., etc., etc. Again, if you want to know more about these topics, go to behave.net. That's the Behavioral Education for Humans, Animals, Vegetations, Vegetation and Ecosystem Management. Uh, Dr. Beth Burt, she still maintains that website, and there's a lot of great information there.